Good evening. You're watching InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Ortiz. It's Tuesday, the 12th of March of 2013, and you're in for a real treat because tonight is our inaugural music edition. Tonight, the United States is arming Syrian rebels. Meanwhile, an army vet joins Al Qaeda. Plus, caught on camera, 13 people are gunned down in a drive by shooting in D.C. And Tatiana Morose breaks in the inaugural music edition up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, it seems the United States is far more involved in the Syrian conflict than officials would like to lead on. According to an article posted today on the NewAmerican.com, the headline reads, Reports U.S. Personnel Arming and Training Syrian Rebels. According to the article, American personnel and allied European governments are secretly training Syrian rebel forces at bases in Jordan to wage war against... Bashir al-Assad regime. Now they're quoting an article from a media outlet in, in Germany called Der Spiegel that basically says that military officials have stated that this in fact is going on. And later on in the article it says the number of trained revolutionaries is set to balloon to some 1,200 men going forward. And the end goal is to create about a dozen free Syrian army units totaling some 10,000 fighters. So there you go. According to this article, there are military officials that are saying that, yeah, the United States does have its hand in the cookie jar. They're not just um, doling out money to help with the humanitarian effort, but they are, in fact, along with the U.K. and French officials, training rebel forces with the hope of toppling the Bashir al-Assad regime. Now, thus far, the United States uh, denies that this is taking place, but we all know that we can't really trust what our government says. Recently, um, uh, Obama administration official, the spokesperson, was said that the Obama administration wanted him to say that there was no drone program, and he wanted him to tell members of the media that there is no drone program, no program is in existence, so we can't really trust what our government officials say. And speaking, thus far, the United States has donated about half a billion dollars towards humanitarian effort in Syria, and about 70,000 people have died as a result of the war that's taking place there, and it's created one million refugees. It seems like the United States is going to get involved in this conflict very soon. Now, speaking of military conflicts in the Middle East, according to an article posted today, or posted recently on the Daily Mail UK, the headline reads, U.S. Army veteran joins Al-Qaeda-linked group after months of fighting with rebel forces in Syria. The article states a U.S. Army veteran says he has joined an offshoot of Al-Qaeda after spending several months fighting alongside Syrian rebel forces. Eric Haroun, 30 years old of Phoenix, has joined Al-Qaeda-linked Al group Jabhat al-Nusra in part because of his fascination with the conflict in the Middle East. Basically what the article is stating is that there's this individual, he used to be an army veteran, he was discharged however because of, for mental uh, reasons, he was uh, clinically depressed, he was discharged, but he's gone back to uh, fight shoulder to shoulder with members of al-Qaeda. That's interesting to know, to know that some of the bullets that will be you know, being sprayed in Syria right now are coming from an American. But is it really that far-fetched? I mean, right now the United States government is working with al-Qaeda in Syria because some of the Syrian rebel forces are members of al-Qaeda. So one minute we're enemies with these individuals, the next minute we're somewhat friendly with them. So what this individual is doing, even though it's obviously not good, isn't that much different than what our government um, is possibly doing. Now, speaking of military weaponry. Our very own Jakari Jackson recently produced a powerful story on drones. There's a convention going on right now, a festival called South by Southwest, and many experts were talking about drones at that festival. My name is Brian Anderson, and I produced a film called Drone On. The basis of the film was to figure out what the hell a drone is and uh, what it isn't, what it can do, what it can't do. 0.99% of drone activity is the weaponized 
that you see going on throughout the Middle East and the Horn of Africa. The rest of it is civilian use, non-lethal. My name is Jesse. I'm with DJI Innovations. I'm the lead technician for the company. This right here is an introductory type model, for good for a beginner. It's, a, it's called the Phantom. If a robot could take out the trash, that gives me five more minutes to spend with my kid at night. That would be a good thing. Of course, we're not looking for the good in robot technology. We're looking for a way to do harm with it. If you look at the trajectory of warfare throughout history, you know, when people put down uh, the sword for a gun, folks said, you know, well, there's no honor in that. You know, there's, there's no honor in, in killing someone from a distance. Um, you know, my personal belief, there is, really is no honor in killing at all times. But, you know, remote warfare is just the, re the, the most recent incarnation of, of, uh, of that, like, distance phenomenon in warfare. We, don't, we do not have any types of contract with the military or any type of things like that so far. I believe in defending your country, but, I mean, when it comes to unmanned airplanes striking against targets that we can't really see from hundreds of miles away, there's got to be some questions asked about that. But in terms of them being used, you know, here in the States, I think for surveillance, absolutely. You know, recently, the Christopher Dorner, the, the fugitive cop in Los Angeles, there was a rumor that started that, that a drone was going after him to, to search for him. Didn't turn out to be true, but a lot of folks said, you know, why wasn't it used to find a guy, you know? I have a neighbor who is a senior police officer with APD, and he asked me about it, and uh, I showed it to him. I flew it for him. Uh, he was very impressed. He wants me to uh, set up an interview and uh, you know, with my boss and so forth to uh, possibly see about getting a contract with the city. I think it's something that should not not be done, but I also think that foreign drone strikes are probably a little off base too. It's like any technology as it democratizes, um, you're going to have to confront these, these problems or these concerns and these issues, you know, privacy. You know, a small personal drone that you can buy off the shelf for $300, uh, that's just a tool. And there's been issues too with people thinking that you could spy with these. It's bright colored, has flashing lights, and it's loud. Well, not really loud, but you can hear it. I can hear it about 30 feet up, so I don't think that'd make a very good spy uh, tool. I never have privacy concerns because I'm the type of person that says, why am I worried about my privacy if I'm not doing anything in my private life that should set off any red flags? Back home in an article posted today on Infowars.com by our very own Kurt Nimmo, the headline reads, Fourth Amendment, we don't need no stinking Fourth Amendment. According to the article, police may solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States, but this is increasingly a meaningless formality for many of them. For instance, a couple of cops in Dallas County, Texas, and you can see the video there, arrived at John Locke's home to serve an arrest warrant on his brother, who wasn't there. Mr. Locke wasn't home either, but instead of coming back at a latter, at a latter time when somebody was home and asking about his brother, the police took it upon themselves to violate the Fourth Amendment and go through, his, go through the homeowner's personal belongings. According to Mr. Locke, they went through his home and uh, police officials in that town, it's the Garland Police Department, um, are saying that, yes, in fact, those cops did not honor that individual's Fourth Amendment rights. And Mr. Locke is quoted as saying, quote, I don't feel safe here at all. We lost that trust in the Garland Police Department. It's time for us to go. He wants to move. So there you go. You've got uh, police cops, uh, po police officers uh, violating the Fourth Amendment. Most officers are good people, but there is a large minority of officers that abuse their authority, and you don't hear a mention of it at all in the media. If those individuals had not been caught on camera, you never would have known that they violated Mr. Locke's Fourth Amendment rights. Now, speaking of tyranny, it seems that homicides continue to take place in Washington, D.C., and in Chicago. 
um, places where gun control advocates say that they should continue the gun control laws that are taking place in these cities. Recently, last night in Washington, D.C., 13 individuals were shot at a drive-by, according to an article posted at the WashingtonPost.com. It says, the headline reads, 13 people shot in a D.C. neighborhood with, violent, with a violent past and a future in flux. They tumbled on the sidewalk or ran for cover, scraping and kicking fruitlessly at the locked front door of an apartment building amid a spray of gunfire from two cars speeding down North Capitol Street. And... In another bastion of uh, gun control laws, uh, the city of Chicago, recently another tragedy happened earlier this week where a six-month-old was shot dead. Her father was changing her pampers. The headline reads, six-month-old girl dies after getting shot multiple times as her father changed her diaper outside a Chicago home. A Chicago family is mourning the tragic death of a six-month-old girl who was shot multiple times as her father changed her diaper. The baby's name, I am hope I'm pronouncing this right, is John Johnila Watkins. She passed away on Tuesday morning, a day after a gunman opened fire on her and her father in the Woodland neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. Authorities say that that individual, her father, he was also shot. He's in in serious but stable condition, but they say he was involved in drug dealing. And here we go again, it's the same MO. The drug war kills plenty of people, yet President Barack Obama and liberals rarely mention it. And those good liberals that do say something about it, they don't harshly criticize uh, the drug war or President Obama's support of the drug war. The drug war kills far more people than massacres do. It's my estimation if you were to end the drug war, you'd see homicide rates drop by at least 40% inside of two years. And in the month of January, Chicago had 40 homicides. I wonder what would have happened if this had happened in Texas and it wasn't drug related. It was just some madman, you know, walking in and, and killing a person. The liberals would be going crazy. But there you go. The, these bastions of gun control, these cities, um, you continue to see more and more violence. The city of Oakland, California, cops have said that uh, they can't control the situation anymore, and they have very strict gun control laws in Oakland. That hasn't helped in that city either. Now, moving on to some more positive news. We want to end this segment with some positive news. In an article posted today on Infowars.com, the headline reads, Most Americans see government as, quote, threat to rights for first time. The article posted by Paul Joseph Watson says, a new poll released by the Pew Re Research Center has found that a majority of Americans now see the government as a threat to their rights for the first time ever. Thank God more people are waking up. According to Pew Research, a total of 53% of Americans view the government as a threat to their personal rights and freedoms, with 43% just loving the government and not believing it poses a threat, and 4% in a complete coma saying uh, they don't know, they have no opinion. But I bet you they know who won the Nick game last night. So 53% uh, saying there's an issue, 43% saying ah, they're not so sure, and 4% of the public completely comatose. Um, but it's good to see that the tides are turning. And you're in for a real treat tonight is our inaugural music edition. And we're going to, you're going to see an uh, artist, a patriotic musician by the name of Tatiana Morose. She's going to be singing here. She came earlier today and she sung right in our studio a wonderful song. So stay tuned for this inaugural music edition. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. 
And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. InfoWars Magazine is more than just our answer to the internet kill switch. We're also going back to the roots of this country. When our founders, for a decade before 1776, known as the pamphleteers, with hundreds of little printing presses in every colony, got out the real news, the real information, and countered the system. This is tailored, designed with the truth to wake up your friends and family. This is the 21st century version of the pamphleteers. So get them at InfoWarsShop.com or InfoWarsStore.com. Sign up and buy them in bulk. Sign up and be a micro distributor uh, for a full year to buy them in bulk and get one of the newsstands added, or sign up and get 12 issues delivered to your door or give a gift subscription. Whatever you do, be part of the fight. And I want to salute and thank all of you that are subscribers and are getting the magazine in bulk or who have ever come to InfoWarsStore.com and bought any of our products because we are supported by patriots and liberty lovers like you. We couldn't do it without you. We are now joined by musician Tatiana Moroz. She has many songs that are politically themed, and uh, she's an activist in the liberty movement. Tatiana, thank you so much for joining us here on InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Now, Tatiana, tell the public a little bit about yourself when it comes to music. Um, when it comes to music, I've uh, been singing and playing guitar, especially singing, ever since I was a little girl. And I came to the liberty movement because I felt that the music today was not really reflecting what was going on and when I was growing up I listened to a lot of different protest music and I was reading 1984 and Brave New World and I was really interested in creating um, a different system in the world that would be uh, better for, for the people at large so unfortunately the music scene has sort of died out and, and has a lot of you know processed crappy music and I thought that with the Liberty Movement, it was a really inspiring thing to write about, and it's a good way to get the message out. Now, what do you know? What are some of the issues that your songs focus on? Um, well, I'm obviously anti-war, so um, I, I have some songs that focus on. You know, there's a song playing the cards that's about the results from war, and you know, the the long-term results as well, and spanning over different generations. Uh, my first libertarian song, uh, which I just did a video for with Luke Radowski, is make a YouTube video, which was about getting people involved, getting online, and doing your own research, and then telling your friends about what you've learned. Now, what are some political issues that concern you the most? Ending the Fed seems uh, like one of the number one. I mean, if they have control of the money, then that's going to be a problem for the rest of us. So until we get the, our money back, that we're not going to be able to do very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, yeah, anti-war and uh, good sound money and free markets. Okay. Now, uh, you were a huge Ron Paul supporter, as Absolutely. we all were, but unfortunately, uh, his political career is over. Are there any other candidates on the scene in the liberty movement that excite you? Um, well, there are quite a few of them. Uh, I wouldn't, I mean, Justin Amash, everybody's really excited about. Um, but, you know, when I think about Liberty Candidates, I go to libertycandidates.com. I think it's a really good resource for people to find people that are local. And because I don't know if you can always do it on a national level, I'm not sure that that solution is going to be found there. Now, you were telling me a little bit earlier, and just to remind the public, uh, Tatiana will be performing in a couple of minutes for us, but you were telling me a little bit earlier that you also have another endeavor called Same Side Entertainment. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, well, Same Side Entertainment, I'm really excited about. Um, last year, when things were winding down with the Ron Paul campaign, uh, I wrote a song called Same Side, which I'm going to be performing a little bit later, and the message is to show, you know, stop the bickering, we're all on the same side, let's focus on what's important here. And I noticed that events around the country were having various levels of attendance and it was very stressful for the event holders. So while I was booking or booking shows for myself, I figured why not book shows for all these other amazing speakers, comedians, musicians, um, economists, 
and that's how Same Side Entertainment was born. So it's basically an event company that uh, you can come to us if you want to book anybody from Tom Woods to Bob Murphy to Luke Radowski or Adam Kokesh um, and also Jordan Page, other different uh, libertarian musicians and people who are basically socially conscious. Oh, it's amazing. Get everyone under one umbrella. Exactly. I, I, it's, it's really stressful to do those events, so I think it, it should be a very good resource for everybody. And we just launched it, so we're very excited. Well, that's good. Now, uh, tell us about some of the things, the positive things that you've seen take place as a result of your music and also, you know, uh, the music of other liberty-minded musicians. I think that music is one of the most powerful forces in the world, and I think that's been exemplified with the connection that I have with my fans. And it's been incredible. I mean, people write me these really sweet letters, and they come up to me after shows, and they say, oh, I've been listening to you. And... There's nothing more fulfilling than being able to connect with people mm -hmm. um, and, and also be appreciated. And, and I appreciate them. So it's been really cool. And I think that it opens up uh, a way that people can relate to their friends and family, too, through the music. You know, the, the family will listen to me. They're like, oh, that sounds good. And then maybe they'll be a little bit more open to having further political discussions. Yeah, we just touched on it right now. Have you been able to, has your music been able to sway anyone's opinion? Like, have you ever been at an event where you're performing and someone's completely not political and then they hear your music and they say, hey, tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, I would say so, definitely. Um, even at uh, ISFLC, I was speaking with somebody who wasn't really into the movement, but he had heard my songs and he was a little bit more open to hearing some of the ideas. So I think it's just... There's so many different ways to open people up and to wake them up, so I'm just trying to come up with my version, and there's other people doing it their way as well. Now, uh, you mentioned that earlier, I mean, you're a huge fan of InfoWars. Yeah, big time. Um, tell us a little bit about what InfoWars means to you and what type of impact InfoWars is having out there in the public. And I, I just say this because we're a little bit insulated here, mm -hmm. you know, but it's important to know you reached out to us. You said you're a huge fan of InfoWars. Tell us a little bit about what InfoWars means to you and the impact that it's having nationwide. Well, I think that InfoWars is huge, you know, and I think it wakes up a lot of different people. Sometimes the style is a little bit intense for people, and I'm one of those people. Not every report is 100% the way that I want to do it, but I'm in awe of how many people are getting woken up and how many people are being reached through this medium, and the information is solid, and I think sometimes you really need to shake people out of their stupor in order to get them to wake up. So I think it's doing the right thing. Yeah, and one, leading the way in a lot of ways. Yeah, and one great way to get the message out is through music, through entertainment. We have something called a Paul Revere competition right now, a contest, where uh, filmmakers are being encouraged to send in a film and they can win $100,000. Uh, I yeah, saw that, yeah. Yeah, the important that the arts can have on the liberty movement is, uh, is intense. It's not just about going out there and having rallies, but also performing, such as what you're doing. Absolutely. I think that, you know, it's not a coincidence that on mainstream radio you're not hearing any anti-war songs. Back in the 60s and the 70s, they had a ton of music like that. So it's up to us and the independent media. We have to kind of create our own little world, our own community, which seems to be working and seems to be growing as an alternative to mainstream programming, literally programming. Lastly, what's the vibe out there in the music scene? I mean, do other musicians welcome what you're doing? Do record labels welcome what you're doing when you, you, know, you, know, you make them aware of what you do? I think that sometimes people... I think that people are filled with good intentions, especially in the arts community, but I don't think that they know the answers. So I think that when people hear Ron Paul, they run screaming into the night saying, Republican, I don't understand. I only like Democrats. But I think that if you explain things to people, you can definitely open them up to it. So I don't know if the world is, the mainstream is, is really ready for this message, but I hope that they are, and that's the objective. Well, Tatiana, in the uh, two minutes we have left, uh, is there any last thing you'd like to let the public know? Um, support liberty people. You know, I mean, Ron Paul is gone now, but it's up to all of us. So I think that I'd really like to see people to continue to be active. You know, there's so many great causes out there that you don't have to give all your paycheck to Ron Paul and his campaign. You can give out a little bit here and there, and I think that um, to support our our own community is really important. 
Okay, well, yeah. Tatiana, thank you so much, and thank you. we're excited to watch you perform. Oh, I'm excited to do so. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tatiana, and hold on tight. Stick around for one more minute. We're going to clear the uh, stage right here, and when you come back, Mrs. Morose is going to be performing for you. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro Filtered Sports Bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go bag favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest Shower Filter System, and the Aquapod Kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. Hi, this is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, with some news about some new additions to the InfoWars store. You know good health is freedom. When you're healthy, you're not a slave to the medical system. Everything works well, your brain, your body, even your spirit. You're a healthier person. And to help support that great health, Alex has asked me to source the cleanest, most potent superfoods and other similar products in the world and bring them to the InfoWars store. InfoWarsStore.com. And we're starting out right now with these three products. We've got Himalayan salt from Pakistan, formed hundreds of thousands of years ago in an ancient seabed long before modern pollution destroyed much of the oceans. This is loaded with trace minerals and it's pristine, true, full spectrum sea salt. We've also got natural attitude turmeric. It's an extract of turmeric, very potent, tastes great, alcohol free. This is from organic turmeric out of India. And we've also got clean chlorella. And we sourced and, and did research on all the chlorella sources around the world, and we found the two cleanest sources that had the lowest levels of any kind of contaminants. In fact, this one is virtually free of all metals and all contaminants. It's called clean chlorella, and it's, it's about two-thirds protein, and it's got chlorophyll and chlorella growth factor in it. Check it out online. It's an amazing superfood that athletes are using and people are using to help support healthy lifestyles. It's fantastic. So check them all out at InfoWarsStore.com. Look for the Health Ranger Select brand and look for more products to be added soon. This is all packaged in our certified organic facility here in Central Texas. There we follow USDA certified standards and we're audited every year by the USDA certifier to make sure that we comply with all organic standards. That combined with the fact that we only source super clean superfoods and raw materials from around the world means that our products represent the cleanest and most potent products that you'll find across the natural products industry. Check all of these out under the Health Ranger Select brand name at the InfoWars store, InfoWarsStore.com. And we'll be bringing you more of these in the near future. Thanks and take care. We have a wonderful shoe in store for you guys. Without further ado, Tatiana Moroz.
So don't forget the time we spent. We're not perfect, but we have good intent. And even though we make mistakes, we stand unified. So hold on tight. It's a hell of a fight. Keeps you up in the night. But we have to remember we're all Mistakes, we stand unified. 